Standing as we begin our service this morning, I welcome you all to Cornerstone Faith Assembly Church, a city where grace and love abide, and this is our Father's house, and indeed, it is your Father's house too. I also want to welcome you who is watching us online, feel welcome, feel a part of this service, and God is going to bless us together. And to you too, I want you to do one more thing, go to your phone. You can go to your, our page, you can like, share, subscribe, and you can also follow us. And we will be blessed together. And this is the opening scripture. Praise the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I fear? Shout with me. None. One thing I ask from the Lord, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, hallelujah, and to seek Him in this temple, right here and now at Cornerstone. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things for us. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, our great God, yes. so humble, so privileged, so honored to come before your presence this morning, yes. that our King of Kings, you've given us another week yes. to come and worship you in yes. your sanctuary, yes. O oh God. Yes. We don't take it for granted, our Father, that we are here. Yes. We know Jehovah God is because of your mercies. Yes. We know it's because of your grace and your loving kindness that endures forever, O oh God. Yes. We are here to exalt you, to worship you, and to tell the whole world, Jehovah God, of your dream. Because our Father, you are so wonderful unto us. And as we begin this service, Lord God Almighty, we thank you. Because we know your presence is rightfully here with us, O oh God. We bless you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful morning to worship the Lord. You can just go ahead and open your mouth and begin to worship the Lord this morning. To proclaim the faithfulness of God this morning. Oh, we bless your holy name. We are going to stretch you. We lift your name. We lift you. We thank you for another day to worship. We thank you for another time to worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because you are a faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Great is the
and we give you praise. Yes, Lord. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap Woo! in the house. Give the Lord a I believe, I believe. 
pursuing us today. You are pursuing us today. You are pursuing our children. You are pursuing our families. You are pursuing the church of God. Because you are the God of miracles. We bless your holy name, Jesus. And we worship you for that reason, Jehovah. For that reason, we worship you. And others to be worshipped. And others to be lifted, oh God. Oh, may the church of God just lift your hands and begin to worship the Lord. Oh, precious Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. You have taken away our pain, our shame. Oh, Lord, we worship you.
everybody just have, have your hands lifted up in the air. If you can lift up your hands, if you can lift up your hands. This is a sacrifice of worship because the Bible says we are the living sacrifice of God. And so we lift up our hands as a sign of surrender, as a sign of worship, Lord. And we are saying, yes, Lord, we worship you today. May you take preeminence over our life. May you take the center place in our life. May you come and fill in that void in our hearts, oh God. That we worship you, Lord. That you may receive our glory. That you may receive our song. That you may receive our worship. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is none like you, our Father, O oh, Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. You are highly exalted, and we thank you, King of Kings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. With the exception of the Sunday school and their teachers, may I request all the others to be seated as we go to pray for our children before we release them to go into their classes. Let's pray. Our Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, our King, our Lord, our Blessed King. We are so humbled, Jehovah God, once again, to come before a Holy God and a Holy King, bringing our children before your presence, Jehovah God, that our King, you've enabled us to worship with them this morning. What joy, Jehovah God, that we can worship with our children. What joy, King of Kings, that here we are, our Father, ready to release our children to go to their classes, ready to be ministered by your servants, our teachers whom you've prepared today, O oh God. How I pray for this mighty, mighty soldiers, Jehovah God, that our Lord God Almighty, you shall preserve them, Jehovah God, that nothing shall by any means harm them, Jehovah God. We surround and cover them with the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord God Almighty, we thank you because we know they are well covered by your presence, King of Kings. And so, our Father, we release them in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And let's God's children say amen. Amen. We release you, our children. My tomorrow must be greater than today.
name of Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Amos Mwangi. I saved, I'm, I'm saved this morning. And I'm happy that uh, I found the Lord as my Savior many, many years ago. And even unto today, he has not failed me. And the song has told us our tomorrow must be better and greater than today. Yes. That is my faith and confession today. It is my conviction that my tomorrow is going to be better and greater than today. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm convicted about. Um, I'm here to introduce a speaker who will come and talk to us the word of God. God has given us another Sunday to come and worship him. After giving us a very nice week, we know that there are people that are still in hospitals today. There are people who are at home and cannot be able to go to different places to do their different activities. But the masses of the Lord has been new upon us. And we have nothing. We have no reservation but just come to lift up our hands before the Lord and say thank you as we worship him and as we uh, magnify his holy name. Today, the speaker of the word of God, who I'm honored to come and introduce to you, is a person that has been with us at Cornerstone for a long time and has been speaking to us at different times. He's a greater, uh, a very a wonderful uh, singer. He can sing, he can worship, he can jump and do different kinds of activities as he prays the Lord. But today he's going to speak to us the word of God. And after the praise and worship has uh, given us a special number, Pastor Isaac Andeche will come and share the word of God with us in this first service. God bless you. We want to say that it is all because of Jesus that we are here. Oh, 
If you were Sana, Amen. I am glad to be here this morning. I am excited that the Lord has given me an opportunity to come to you and to fellowship with you and to share the word of God 
with you. And therefore, I want to take this opportunity to appreciate our Bishop, uh, Dr. Francis Kamau, for finding me worth to stand on this pulpit and share the word of God with the people of God in this sanctuary. Wherever you are, man of God, I want you to know that I appreciate you. I honor the grace of God upon your life. May the Lord do you good. May the Lord increase you. And may the Lord keep you strong each and every day in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand clap as we, as we appreciate our bishop, our father. I say give the Lord a mighty hand clap and a shout as well. Hallelujah. Also want to take this opportunity to appreciate mama uh, in the house. Mama in the house. And, and, and uh, as they say, you are always an encouragement and we appreciate you big time. God bless you. May the Lord keep you strong. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap for mama and a shout of praise. Amen. Amen. And amen. I also want to take this opportunity to appreciate all the pastors and uh, all the leaders in this church. May the Lord bless you. Let's appreciate them as well. Amen. And amen. And amen. Uh, my name is Pastor Isaac Kande. And um, I want to humbly request us to stand as we open our Bibles in the book of Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. Haggai chapter 2, we are reading, uh, we will read verses 20 to 23. Yes, verses 20 to 23. Haggai chapter 2, verses 20 to 23. And the Bible says, And again, the word of the Lord. Sorry? Okay, let us read all of us. Let's go. The word of the Lord. Amen and amen. May you have our seats in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We pray that you will bless us with life that is embedded in the word. And we pray that your word will transform us this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. See, this morning I want to share about what I have titled the supreme power of God. The supreme power of God. And one of the things that I want us to know is that um, issues of life um, has always or have a way to expose um, how powerful um, or how powerless um, uh, creation um, can be. If you want to know how powerful or powerless you are, then wait until you are faced with a situation you are faced with a difficulty. That is when you will know how strong you are and how power, powerless you are. A situation that is beyond your ability. A situation that is beyond your wisdom. A situation that is beyond your knowledge. A situation that is beyond your connection and networks. When you are faced with such a situation, that is when you realize how powerful you can be or how powerless um, you can also be. It is then that you realize uh, that mortality cannot do without God. That 
is when you realize that mortality only exists under the grace and under the ability of God. But I want us to understand that you and me belong to a kingdom that is unlimited. You and me belong to a God that is unlimited. He is unlimited in power. He is unlimited in mercy. He is unlimited in love. He is unlimited in power, uh, in might. And there is no limit of time with him. He works in the past. He also works in the present. And he also works in the future. And therefore, help me tell your neighbor, I belong to a greater power and a greater kingdom. And I know you can do better than that. Turn to another neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I belong to a greater power and a greater king kingdom. Now, for us to be able to understand what we read, the Haggai uh, chapter 2 verses 20 to 22, then we've got to read Haggai chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. So that you can be able to understand exactly how this word came to be. Now, when you read Haggai chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, the Bible says this. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? How do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now, yet now, be strong, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of uh, uh, Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, says the Lord, and I, and work, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord. Now, it is here that uh, God asked Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the people that were there, uh, you know, that were, among with, that were among with them, that, you know, is asking them, who among you was there, um, uh, you know, when I uh, saw this house in its former state? I mean, how do you look at it now? Does it not seem to you like a delicate, a ruined and nothing. And so Haggai 2 verses 20, God declares a war. God declares a war against a royal thrones. God stands up and declares war against powers and against foreign kingdoms. The royal thrones and the powers of the foreign kingdoms had diluted the, 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 the temple of God. The kingdom, this kingdom was ruled by Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed the, the temple of God that was built by Solomon. And he looted things from that at the temple. Not only did he loot things from the temple, he also destroyed the temple and left it completely ruined. Not only did he ruin the church, I mean the temple, he also took the Jews captive. He took them to Babylon. And this displeased God. And God now came to a meeting to restore the temple uh, through Zerubbabel. But you need to realize that the nature of God does not allow him to provoke anybody. God does not provoke anyone. But when God is provoked, then he has got to respond to the provocation. And one day, a minister in this country said, that when you rattle a snake, be ready to do what? Ah, talk to me, church. If you rattle a snake, be ready to do what? Uh huh. And, and, and therefore, uh, uh, when you provoke God, then be ready to be ready to deal with God Himself. Because God does not provoke anybody. 
But when you provoke God, then be ready to be dealt, uh, be dealt, dealt by God. And one thing we must agree here, brethren, is that before you get into any battle, before you begin to fight anyone, you must weigh your muscles, you must weigh your strength, you must weigh yourself in comparison with the person that you want to fight with. Otherwise, if you don't do that, what will happen is we will find you at City Mocha. And therefore, King Nebuchadnezzar provoked God by not only looting the temple, but also leaving it in ruins. And, I mean, leaving it destroyed. And also by taking the Jews to captive. But one thing that Nebuchadnezzar did not understand, he did not understand that he was dealing with the king of kings and the lord of lords. He did not understand that he was dealing with God that is all powerful. And Isaiah chapter 66 verses 1 the Bible says, this is what the Lord says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my stool. Now my footstool. Realize this, there cannot be a throne without a kingdom. There can never be a throne without a kingdom. Because throne is an establishment of the kingdom. Throne is a position of power. Throne is a position of influence. Throne is a position that dictates results. Throne is a position of authority execution. See, stability, effectiveness, efficiency, and the impact of any kingdom is determined by whoever occupies the throne. Stability, effectiveness, efficiency, and the impact of any kingdom is determined by whoever occupies the throne. Because whoever occupies the throne is a symbol of authority. Now, we have to realize that we are dealing with the two kingdoms here. There is a kingdom that is pro-you. And there is a kingdom that is anti-you. The kingdom that is anti-you wants to see you defeated. The kingdom that is unto you wants to see you sick. The kingdom that is unto you wants to see you stagnate. The kingdom that is unto you wants to see you fail. The kingdom that is unto you wants to see you dead and buried. But the kingdom that is pro you wants to see you succeed. The kingdom that is pro you wants to see you promoted. The kingdom that is pro you wants to see you victorious and doing well. Now, there are three points that I want to bring out uh, based on the story that we have read. Number one, you realize that Nebuchadnezzar looted the temple. He looted the valuables from the, the temple which was a holy place. First Corinthians chapter 6 verses, I mean chapter 3 verses 16 the Bible says this. Don't you know that you yourselves are the temple of God and God dwells in you? Some of us are going through losses. Some of us are going through, uh, you know, are dealing, uh, are dealing with tough issues. The enemy has invaded into the temple because you are the temple of God. God has deposited valuables in you. God has deposited peace in you. God has... Be, and, and listen to me. The Bible says in Jeremiah that you are an axe, the axe of battle in God's hand. And therefore you are valuable to God. You are valuable to God. And the enemy knows that you are the temple of God. And in you God has deposited stuff that are there to impact the kingdom. God has deposited in you things that are to affect the kingdom but now some of us are dealing with the staff that, can, that are that, that looting our joy out of the temple they are looting our peace 
out of the temple. They are looting our victory out of the temple. He, the, the, the Bible says that, uh, the Bible says that, uh, his, I mean, um, Nebuchadnezzar looted the temple. He took away things that were valuable from the temple. Some of us are dealing with marriage and the enemy has teared down completely your marriage. He has teared down your business. He has looted the joy and the, you know, the financial benefits of your business. Your children are, he has looted your children of their sanity. He has looted your ministry of its effectiveness. You are almost losing your mind. But listen to me, church. God is a jealous God. God, he's a jealous God. He is jealous of his own temple. And you are the temple of God. This is why Corinthians 1, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, the Bible says, If anything, if anyone or anything destroys God's temple, God will destroy it. If sickness is there to destroy the temple of God, God will destroy the sickness. If fear is there to destroy the temple, then God will destroy the fear. If scarcity is there to destroy the temple, then God will deal with the scarcity. And I come to submit to you, you are a precious temple in the house of God. You are the temple of God. And God values you. And he will deal with anything that wants to intimidate you. Anything that wants to terrorize you. God himself will terrorize it. Because you are a temple of God. And God is jealous about his temple. Because in the temple, God has hidden treasures of the kingdom. In the temple, God has hidden the treasures of revelation. In the temple, God has has, has actually God has, 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 has hidden the treasures that are there to impact the world. And therefore he knows when the temple is destroyed, then his purposes are destroyed. When the temple is destroyed or interfered with, then his purpose and his plans are interfered with. And so God must protect the temple because he values the temple. Can somebody say God values the temple? Number two. Nebuchadnezzar ruined the temple. He ruined the temple. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar ruined the temple. He destroyed the temple. The temple became a shadow of what it used to be the previous times. And God asked. Who among you saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you right now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? Does it have any glory? Does it have any honor? Listen to me, church. Some of us are a shadow of who we used to be. Some of us are a shadow of used to be. Your ministry is a shadow of you, what it used to be. Your ministry does not have the impact that it used to have those days. We don't feel you the way we used to feel you those days. Because the devil has ruined what you had built. He destroyed your efforts. He interfered with your dreams. But I hear Matthew chapter 16 verses 18. The Bible says, I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of heads will not prevail against you. Can I preach this message as I feel it today? Sickness cannot prevail over you. Illness cannot prevail over you. Curses cannot prevail over you. But it cannot prevail over you. Because you are the church. You are the temple built on the rock. Come on somebody. You are the church. You are the rock that God has built on the rock. And because God has done that. You have all reasons to start. 
you've got all reasons to win because you are dealing with all powerful God. He is the supreme God. He's got all the supreme power belongs to him. Luck cannot overcome you. Embarrassments cannot prevail over you. Because you are the apple of God's eye. Number three. Nebuchadnezzar took Jews captive. Nebuchadnezzar did not only loot the, the temple, he also ruined it. He did not only loot and ruin the temple, but he went ahead and took the Jews as captives. Now you need to realize that Jews were and are still special people to God. They are God's chosen ones. I mean God has got a soft spot for Jews. But now Nebuchadnezzar has taken them captive. And that was a provocation. And you need to understand that you and me have been crafted into the same covenant through Jesus Christ. And that is why John chapter 1 verses 12 the Bible says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in him, in his name, he gave them the right to become the children of God. And so we have been crafted into the same covenant that God had, 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 had fashioned between him and, 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 and Abraham and Jacob. So we are beneficiaries of the same covenant. We are partakers of the kingdom privileges. And therefore the devil has no right to take us captive in any way. Our children can never be taken captive. Our money can never be taken captive. Our health can never be taken captive. Our body can never be taken captive. And some of us, our kids have been taken captive until we are wondering what is happening with them. Our health has been taken captive. Our finances have been taken captive. Our families have been taken captive. Our pursuits have been taken captive. We wake up every morning to fight for our children. We wake up every morning to fight for our families. We wake up every morning to fight to get money. Because it has been taken captive. And I come to submit to you. When, when Nebuchadnezzar did that, he provoked God. Because these are the people of God. I came to submit to you. You and me belong to God of heaven and earth. You and me belong to God that owns, that has all, that is all powerful. And therefore the devil has no right to take us captive in any way. And whenever he does that, he must be ready to deal with God. Let me finish this sermon by saying this. When Nebuchadnezzar had looted the church at the temple, when Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed the church, I mean the temple, and when Nebuchadnezzar had taken Jews captive, God came and declared war. <laughs> that shows you how much God loves his people. That shows you how much God loves you. He declared war. And this is what he said. I am going to shake the heavens and the earth. I am going to, over, to overturn royal thrones. I am going to shatter the power of the foreign kingdoms. I will overthrow chariots and their drivers. And horses and their riders will fall. Each by the sword of his brother. Come on, I came to tell you this. God has declared war against foreign gods that has looted your peace. 
God has declared war against the foreign gods that have looted your destiny. God has declared war against the foreign gods that have looted your family. The powers that have ruined your life. God has declared war against the chariots that are intimidating you and terrorizing your pursuits. God has declared war against the thrones that are negatively influencing your life. Can I preach this message as I feel it? The war is on my brother. The war is on my sister. The war is on to bring back your past glory. The war is on to bring back your past own. The war is on to bring back your past to the fold. The war is on to bring back your money. The war is on to bring back your wealth. The war is back is on to bring back your health. The war is back to bring back. The war is on to bring back your sanity. The war is on to bring back your anointing. The war is on to bring back you into the place where God had planted you. Come on, can I preach to you? The Bible says that you are like a tree planted by the riverside. Your responsibility is to nourish. Your responsibility is to grow. Your responsibility is to do well. But the enemy has attacked you. I come to submit to you. The war is on. I say the war is on. Your victory is coming back. Your victory is coming back. Your joy is coming back. Your laughter is coming back. Your peace is coming back. Your money is coming back. Your family is coming back together. The devil cannot do anything because the Bible says no weapon formed against you can prosper in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that you are planted. You are planted by the Lord. The war is on. The war is being fought by all powerful God. The war is being fought by God himself. Let me tell you my brother, my sister. You've got no power to win these battles. Oh, I told you. Before you engage anyone to fight. Jabed, come here. Come here, Jabed. Chabet, look at me. Can you fight me? Can you fight me? Do you have enough muscles to fight me? Do you really have enough muscles to fight me? You can't. Before you begin a battle, weigh your enemy strength first against your enemy. Your seats have shut up on me. The devil has lost the battle. The devil has lost the battle. He just began a war that he can't win. Oh. He just began a battle that he can't win. He just began a battle that he can't win. He provoked the all-powerful God. When God, when God stands on his throne, the Bible says, Arise, O oh God, let your enemies be scattered. Arise, O oh God. Let your enemies be scattered. God is about to scatter your enemies. May I humbly request us to stand. May I humbly request us to stand. The war is on. The war is on to bring back your emotions back to sanity. You can't lose your mind over the battle that is fighting for you. One time, one time, I went to bed I never knew the following morning I will wake up. 
a widower. Went to bed with my children. I never knew they will wake up the next morning without a mother. Went to bed. Never knew that that was the last time I was going to call this woman sweetheart. Went to bed. Knowing that the next day is going to be just the same as my yesterday. But alas, the worst happened. I became a widower in my young age. I did not know how to fight that battle. My strength was completely drained. The things that are the people that I thought would come to my aid, they were not there. They were not there. But God fought the battle. <laughs> but God fought the battle. There is no situation in your life that is beyond God. We are in the kingdom that, how, that has outclassed empires of the world. We belong to a kingdom that has overdone, uh, override, overrided uh, many empires in the world. Kings have come and gone. Presidents have come and gone. But the kingdom of God is still here. Be yes. afraid of what you are dealing with. I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to lift up your hands and your eyes closed. Your eyes closed. Your eyes closed. I want you to begin to pray and ask God for supernatural intervention. You know the battle you are fighting right now. You can't win it with your own Im imagination and with your own strength. Pray. Jesus Jesus Come on everybody sing Jesus, and therefore God owns this altar. 
true victory is provided on this altar. True healing has been provided on this altar. True joy has been provided on this altar. Ya kalabos kalabahanda. Liprosa ya makaleba shalabahanda. Roko yo poli katabaganda. Zapka na leke telema shalabahanda. Makata la basola baboyanda. Makasa kayele kotobokaya. Rapraza kalabasona. Mapro leke le basaya. Come on, lift up your voice to God. 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 Yeah, Moshika la bayanda, raka ya kata la moshka, ramasha la baka la bahanda, loko ya la bahanda, zaka ya la basha mingo ya ne, raka ya basi ketele bataya, ye kala. He's raining. He is raining over your situation. He is raining over the situation. He is raining over your fears. He is raining over your circumstances. He is raining. Raining. Jesus is raining. Jesus is raining. Jesus is waiting. 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 He is taking over. He is taking over. He is taking over. He is taking over. Jesus is taking over your situation. Yes, he is reigning over your situation. He is taking it over. He is taking over. He's taking over. He's taking over. He's taking over. Yes, Lord. La praza la mahanda. Rika la busca la baga la mahanda le busca. Rika la mahanda le 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 morina. Ya ni pota ya mahanda. Thank you, Jesus. There is a supernatural takeover. There is a supernatural takeover that is taking place right now. There is a supernatural takeover over your situation. There is a supernatural takeover over your fears. There is a supernatural takeover over your science and certainties. There is a supernatural takeover. A supernatural takeover. Yapralaka la kalabahanda. Thank you, Jesus. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Whatsoever you find difficult for God to handle, for man to handle, God is handling it. He's handling it. He's handling it. He's handling it. He's handling it for you. Thank you, Jesus. Your hands lifted up to the Lord. While your hands are lifted up to the Lord, Father, I pray for your daughters and your son. I decree supernatural takeover. I decree supernatural takeover. Ah! I decree supernatural takeover. Yes. Everything that has been terrorizing them, I decree supernatural takeover. Yes. Everything that has been intimidating them, I decree supernatural all takeover. Thank you, Father. Healing is happening. Pastor Merrick is happening. Healing is happening. The power of God is taking place. The power of God is taking over. The power of God is taking over. Grace is, grace is taking over. Grace is taking over. Grace is taking over. Grace is taking over. Thank you, Father. Father, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, I will decree a thing and it will surely come to pass. Everyone that is raising their hands here, 
I decree supernatural and divine visitation in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them leave this place visited by you. And I decree an end, an end, an end to that situation. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. service cannot end without us giving to the Lord because that is our act of worship those that are watching us online I want to invite you to use the number that is on the screen you can write that number down if you are sending via Mpesa please there is a number there is a pay bill if you're writing a check, there is also a PO box there. You can mail your check. And for those ones of us who are in the sanctuary, with humility, may I humbly request you to reach out to the envelope that is next to you uh, for your giving. There is also a card next to you. Please help us with some information. The date of today the service that you are attending right now, your name, your telephone number, and if you have children in the Sunday school, please do, uh, uh, do as a favor and write their names as well. And uh, if you are out there and you are not born again, I want also to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. And therefore, if you are watching us online, I want you to take that telephone number Someone is waiting for you to pray with you and to help you give your life to Christ Jesus. May I humbly request my brother to... This morning, and we have a couple of people watching online that I'm going to mention the names, just a few names. Uh, we have Wanjiro Arkamau, we have Maureen Kadiga, Winning Gache, George Chikejo, Fidelis Zena, Renda Okot, Esther Mombi, Chantel Paris, Caroline Branca, Samuel M. Ikiara, Busumulao, Evan Juguna, Lillian K. Munga, Impress Diko, Daniel Simintei, Samuel Kivia, El Elizabeth Kabara, uh, Anthony Ogutu, Nelly Hudson, Kelin Kisembo, Mike Sadera, John Bosco, Grace Mukondi, and so many more watching online. We appreciate you. And may the Lord bless you for joining us. Amen. Thank you so much. And I would also like to remind us of an upcoming event this afternoon, a call to worship afternoon, uh, hosted by our pastor, Bishop Dr. Francis M. Kamau. And uh, the guest minister is Pastor Reverend Isaac Ahora. Uh, you are all invited. This event uh, will start as from 2 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. in the evening. And we are all welcome to come and worship the Lord together. Thank you. Amen and amen. Uh, let's give the Lord a shout of praise and a hand of clap for our brother. Yes, I also with humility want to um, remind us of our weekly meetings uh, here from Tuesday to Friday uh, from 12.45 and uh, when we are here we don't limit God on, but we begin here our midweek services from Tuesday to Friday 12.45 may I humbly request you to stand
Um, mm -hmm. If you have packaged your offering, that those that are using the pay bill here in church, please feel free to do that. Uh, yes. Let us stand as we finalize the service. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of our Father forever and ever. Amen. 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 God bless you and have a wonderful week.